Joining me is Michael Emprick. He's a Guinness Book of World Records adjudicator. Michael, we've had stories, I mean, it's probably 10 or 15 stories over the years about world records where there's either confusion about why something even is a world record or something that just seems so hard to even confirm that has actually taken place, that type of thing. So as an adjudicator, what do you actually do? Are you the person who, who stands by and observes these records being broken? That's right. Um, Guinness World Records has a team of adjudicators who uh, basically travel the world looking at amazing achievements uh, as they happen. I'm actually at home. I'm headed out to the airport when we finish this interview um, to go to a, a world record attempt. So that's, that's my job. Okay. So how many of these a year do you go to? So I'm on the road generally at least once a week, if not more. Um, so sometimes I'll have back to back, uh, sometimes I'll head to a city for an extended amount of time, like a week or so to do a bunch of, of adjudications in the city. Uh, it varies, it varies on the season and it varies on who wants to bring an adjudicator out to their, to their event. Okay. So how does that work? Does the person who wants to set a record pay to have someone come out or how does that work? So to, to set a Guinness World Record, your first step would be to go to the website, which is guinnessworldrecords.com. You can review all of our existing records there. And <laughs> if you want to, you can send us uh, an email or call us. We get about a thousand replies through our website a week. Um, all of those get a personalized response. So that's the first step. The next step would be seeing if, if your record is valid, if it might be a potential record, and then going from there. Uh, you can get the guidelines that Guinness World Records prepares. We have very detailed rules and guidelines that everyone would get. Um, you can document the evidence on your own, which is completely free. Uh, you just need to document, have photo evidence, video evidence, uh, notary uh, signed statements, and then you would send that in. Or as a value-added service, Guinness World Records will have a, a, an adjudicator come out to your attempt if that's what you want to do. Okay, and then so who pays for that, though? The, the attempt organizer would pay for that. The attempt, okay. So, yeah. So what what would not qualify as a world record? Like, in other words, I'm guessing every, it has to be quantitative in some way, right? Like, Absolutely. for example, on my show, I could argue that some of the interviews I've done, we probably got some of the most outrageous anti-Semitic statements anyone has ever heard. But it seems like that's kind of a, it's, it's subjective, right? So, yeah. So to be a Guinness World Record, you need to meet some qualifiers, um, and this is true for all of our records. Uh, number one, it has to be measurable. So you have to be able to quantify it in some countable way. It has to be standardizable. So what is a record in the United States is a record in Japan is a record in Europe. Uh, they all have to be standardizable across the board. It has to be verifiable. Uh, so you have to provide documentation or verification of the attempt. And it has to be breakable. Uh, so what we won't do is have records for the world's first something. If you're the first person to do something, that's not a Guinness World Record achievement because no one can then break that. Uh, for standardizable things, we get a lot of requests for, um, you know, beauty. I think I'm the most beautiful woman in the world. I have a <laughs> beautiful child. You can't standardize that. Um, there's no kind of standardized scientific quantifiable way to measure beauty. Um, and until there is, we won't be able to recognize attempts like that. And then the last bit is that it has to be interesting. Um, so it has to kind of engage our readers. It has to be something that would make a great photo opportunity, would be like a wow moment. Um, and that can vary. Uh, you know, it can go from the woman with the world's longest fingernails to the most people shaking hands simultaneously. Both of those records, while very different, um, are a great visual, they're a great story, and they're really fascinating to people that read the book or uh, watch our shows or go to the website. What's the weirdest record that you've adjudicated? The weirdest record that I've ever been to, there's two of them. Number one was meeting uh, Shrita Furman, who actually holds the Guinness World Record for the most Guinness World Records. In his career, he has... <laughs> 400 records. He currently holds, I believe it's just over 150. I did his 150th record on the 4th of July this year, which was the fastest half marathon while skipping. So he skipped an entire half marathon <laughs> and I rode a bike next to him. Uh, other strangest one, uh, we get a lot of mass participation records and the weirdest mass participation I've done is most people dressed as Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles because there were a lot of there who took it very, very seriously. Um, 
and it was a great event, but a good mix of people. Is there a fine line somewhere? Like, I think a couple of weeks ago, we covered the story where uh, there was a record set for swimming the backstroke while juggling balls or something like that, fastest or something like that. Now, what if I wanted to say, well, I want to do swimming backstroke while, um, while, while playing chess on a board that's laying on my stomach or something like that. Like, well, it, what, what's the line here? Well, David, if you were able to do that, we would love to talk to you because <laughs> that would be a great picture for the book. Um, what, what I'll say is that uh, what a lot of times with Guinness World Records, what we'll do is, um, you know, look at things that are, are existing fields. So I think what you're saying with the, the swimming backstroke and juggling, you know, <laughs> juggling is a, is a very popular competitive category. We have a lot of submissions for that. And we also get a lot of submissions for swimming records. Right. So combining those uh, could be a, a really interesting, you know, photo opportunity and be interesting. So basically but, what you're saying is for world records, the same thing applies. Like when you pitch a movie in Hollywood, you might say it's Fresh Prince of Bel-Air meets uh, Pulp Fiction. So for world records, if you're like, it's juggling meets swimming, then that's a good candidate. It's yeah. And, and what I'll say with that is that we always want them to be interesting. But what we won't do is something like um, that are two separate existing records. So a good example would be um, the oldest person to run the fastest marathon. Um, it wouldn't be both of those. It would be the oldest person to run a full marathon or the fastest marathon because hmm. you wouldn't have a combination of two very disparate things where juggling and swimming are unique enough to where it's it's a bit of a twist on an existing record to where you could probably make it work. Hey, last thing I want to ask you about, what about stuff that would fall under, like, okay, let's take marijuana, for example. Marijuana mm -hmm. now is legal in some states. It's not legal in others. There's different laws around the world. So presumably people could start submitting and, and, and asking for some kind of marijuana-related record. So what, where do you draw the line on stuff that is in some places maybe illegal or not? Or is it anything that's drug-related is out? How does that work? Generally, anything that's overly controversial um, wouldn't make it in. We are very much a family publication, a family brand. Mm. So things that are drug-related, things that are alcohol-related uh, generally wouldn't make it in. Anything that could be considered uh, dangerous to yourself or harming yourself, we've kind of started to get away from. Huh. Um, when I was little in the book, we used to have lots of mass eating, um, you know, consuming large amounts of food. We've actually <laughs> gotten away from that at Guinness World Records because it's very bad for you. Right. You're uh, going in a different direction when it comes yeah, to the gorging. Gotcha. Awesome. Hey, last thing. If, if I wanted to say, like, my goal is to just have some kind of record in there or maybe my producer Lewis's goal, mm -hmm. what category broadly do you think is the easiest? In other words, I'm sure that some things are easier than others or, or, or maybe there's, there's less records so you could get in there easier. Like, what would you recommend to someone who is an adjudicator? Well, what, what I can say is that things that would be harder to do would be the more physical things. So um, whether it's running, whether it's uh, physical endurance, uh, those tend to be the hardest things to do because when you're playing soccer for 42 hours, when you're doing something like that, that's from, from my experience, those tend to be the hardest to successfully do. Yeah. Uh, the, the easier ones or the more common ones that people can kind of have a fun time doing are mass participation. Um, so as long as you can get, you know, a thousand people or however many people you need dressed as Santa Claus somewhere, uh, you can have a successful record attempt. It's, it's things like that that tend to be a bit easier. Yeah. Uh, none of them are really easy. For, you'd be surprised what isn't as isn't successful. You so would, for example, if I were able to get like 50 people dressed like Piers Morgan, for example, with a Piers Morgan mask, if no one's done that, 50 might get me in, right? Um, if it was Piers Morgan, probably not. We would probably want a more iconic character oh, okay. uh, than, than a CNN host. Um, Interesting. I would say that. Interesting. Interesting. All right. Well, this is uh, I, and then last thing, theoretical stuff like on the Piers Morgan show a week or two ago, Alex Jones talked about how many chimpanzees can dance on the head of a pin. Like, is there any opportunity there? Like, if, could we determine like I, I got somehow I got chimpanzees on the head of a pin? It's it would be really hard to do because um, 
chimpanzees in general can't do that. <laughs> um, so to then make a record out of that would be almost impossible. We like right. to stick to realistic, documentable things. Well, Lewis, we're going to go back to the drawing board. We will plan and then we will we will maybe have an adjudication. We've been speaking with Michael call. Emprick, Guinness Book of World Records adjudicator. I don't want to hold you up. I know you have to run now to actually do some I do. adjudication. I have to head to the airport. Thanks so much for being on, Michael. Thanks so much, David. I've had a great time.